Cafeteria food. Something that was always a last resort when you forget your lunch at home or forget to do the assignment at 11.59 the night before. So why is it so bad? I know it's always been on our minds and I'm here to rant about that. So for sure, for sure, it's not the impeccable flavor that the greasy, day-old, stale crust, chemically bad, cheesy pizza leaves in your taste buds. In fact, could it be the unproperly allocated funds to these schools, or the lack of resources and equipment that these schools have, or even the access to these unhealthy unhealth foods that they have? Surely not. Well, could it? Let me expand. For example, let's take 20 apples to show how much money the school has to handle. Five apples to resources like textbooks, new desks, and maybe even replacing washing pipes. And additionally, another 10 apples to teachers' salaries and possibly caregiver salaries. Uh, four apples to, let's say, vending machines and gym equipment like basketballs and soccer balls. And the last apple to, per se, cafeteria. No? You see, slowly and slowly, cafeterias are funded less and less money to work with because of the dwindling students who participate in the lunch program. According to ncl.net, over $1.2 billion annually is wasted on food, pressuring boards to lower the funds sent to these cafeterias, contributing to morbid obesity in the worst case scenario. Overall, they should consider raising the funds instead of lowering them to allow students to access healthier foods and with these healthier foods come more staff and equipment. So this leads me to my second main point. More staff members and equipment need to be placed in schools to uphold a healthy standard in schools for kids to follow. With the imaginary new salary allocated, credible staff members with culinary backgrounds could start making 200 meals a day half an hour, an hour and a half early before students get out. Making, let's say, a homemade chicken burger with a hearty salad and a fresh orange juice. This way they can show the developing mind what it's like to have an earthy, earthy and proper meal once in a while. More staff members and equipment would help the schools prepare healthy meals and not the crummy ones we have right now, like the greasy pizzas or microwave burgers. Now, lastly, did you know that one in three kids, yes, you heard me right, one in three kids are morbidly obese or overweight. Out of the 10 million kids in Canada, 3.3 of them are overweight. This is an insane statistic that not even I believe. Moreover, cafeteria food like microwave burgers or nuggets or even packaged milk that has been sitting in transport trucks for days contributes to this astonishing fact. For that reason, I offer this solution. Schools should invest the $1.2 billion that they waste on processed foods into sporting locally or non-corporate companies to set a good example for kids and show them how to make responsible choices. Although, I do notice my little flaws in this plan. The bi in fact, these big corporations that I just mentioned lock down and restrict the schools from actually pr supporting locally. Don't tell them this, but 36% of schools get away with serving locally, locally grown foods and vegetables like carrots, peaches, and apples. Think of all the kids struggling with the, their weight because the corporations can't take their money off, can't take their mind off money for a second. The struggling body image turns into negative body image, which morphs into depression and anxiety, which in the worst cases can lead to taking their lives. Now, these are only in the extremes. So the next time I think of cafeteria foods and the lack of funds allocated to them, or the absence of staff and equipment and the grossly restraining contracts that the corporations place on schools to force them to feed the young developing kids high saturated fatty foods, just remember there is a solution. Think locally and support locally. Thank you.